Hello, my name is Warren Cartwright, and I'm a Director of Product Management here at Zero Wireless, responsible for our management solutions. In the context of today's discussion, that's really talking about ALMS. And what we're going to cover on today's session is registering devices into customer accounts as a CR Wireless partner. I know there are a lot of kind of questions out there from our partner community as to how you can help your customers by registering devices on their behalf. And we're gonna walk through a couple of different ways that you can do that today. In terms of what you need to have in place uh, in order to do the things that I'm gonna show you today, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about all of them, and uh, hopefully everyone has had an opportunity to review the ALMS reseller uh, training video that we did uh, a little bit earlier this month. So for prerequisite perspective, uh, there are a couple of things. One, you need to have an ALMS reseller type account. Uh, we covered off kind of what that means and how you can check if you have it in, in that previous session that I mentioned. And you have to make sure that your customer accounts are set up with the correct partnerships in place. Um, if you are using your signup URL in your ALMS reseller account to create, have your customers create their own accounts, um, then they will be set up correctly and there shouldn't be anything you need to worry about and everything should just happen automatically as I'm going to show you here today. Um, if not, again, in that other training video, we talked through some of the things that you'll need to work with your customers on in order to make sure that your accounts are uh, correctly associated with each other. For doing registration, obviously, you're going to need a list of devices and device information. Um, at the very least, you're going to need uh, your list of serial numbers and IMEIs of the devices in question that you're going to register. And um, depending on what optional features you want to trigger, and we'll, we'll talk about this as we go through it, you might need you know, a list of passwords that are being assigned to the devices, or you may need a, a template for your ALMS device, for your device configuration, um, or, or other things as part of that pre-registration process that, that is optional. And then the last thing, and one thing you might need to do, is depending on the types of devices in question that you're going to register, uh, you may need to make sure that the reference firmware for those device types are in your account in ALMS already. <clears throat> and so that means if you're planning on registering MP70s or LX60s, you know, depending on the type of device in question, and you've never had one of those devices in your own ALMS reseller account previously, you may need to go into um, the application section um, of ALMS and add them to your account uh, before you begin. So um, we can always help you with that if that doesn't make sense, but it, it should be in most accounts, we'll, we'll probably have all the things they need in order to um, start this process and be successful with it. And so we'll just continue through and talk about that a little bit more now. So in the context of registering devices, um, there are two different ways that you can register devices into customer accounts. Um, if you're just registering devices into a single account, um, it's, it's quite a straightforward process and it's really no different than using the existing register capabilities. If you want to register devices into multiple accounts all at once, let's say you've got a, a big batch of devices across a bunch of different customers, um, there's a way for you to do that as well. All of this uh, registration process you know, follows the same flows as any of our standard registration. And so it will take care of doing the automatic um, AirLink complete registration as part of the process as well. The only caveat you do need to be aware of is that our registration process only works for a single device type. So um, if you want to register a whole batch of MP70s into a, a number of different customer accounts, you can do that. If you have MP70s and RV50s and LX40s, you will have to do each of those batches of devices uh, independently. So we're just going to um, jump into the system and do this live and we will show you um, exactly how this will look uh, to you uh, as you go about and register these devices into your customers' accounts. And so we're gonna flip over and uh, look at ALMS. And so I am now logged into 
ALMS and um, in my reseller account, as you can see, um, you'll notice there are no systems in this account because I haven't actually registered anything yet. And so we're going to look at both scenarios uh, that we previously talked about. We're going to look at registering devices into a single account first. I mean, really, the easiest way to do this is to actually go in um, to your account, go to change company, and select the partner account that you want to register the device into. And so in this case, I'm going to register it into my fire department account. And so now I am in the fire department account. And because we have the right permissions set up, I can just go to the register tab. And I have an LX60 here that I'm going to try and register. And so I have a serial number and you know it's validating that that's an LX60 for me. And I have the IMEI for it. And I'm just going to do a very simple registration. You know, we're not going to go through all of the features that are capable for registration. And similarly, if you had a, a number of devices for this particular customer, you could use the typical import a list function. And I'm going to go register that device. And so we'll see down here, the operations have launched, the import system launched, and it has been successful. And if we were to go to the monitor systems page, we will see that we have this new device that we registered. We didn't do anything with it, so it's just coming in as system based on the serial number, um, or based on the IMEI, excuse me. And you'll see over here, most importantly, that my support date for Airlink Complete has been um, updated. So now I've got a device that is uh, good for support through uh, May of 2021, and my warranty date has been shifted out three years. So we can see that this system operation has been op has been done and has been activated. And from a customer's perspective, if they looked at it, you know, we're going to see that you know the eligibility was confirmed, which system was done. But we'll see that you know it was launched by me as the partner rather than me as one of the um, users in this particular account. So like I said, that's all very straightforward. Um, you know, no different than registering a device normally, which hopefully you're very familiar with. And so <clears throat> if you just had a device or, you know, a batch of 10 MP70s that you're going to do for a particular customer, going to their account and doing that process, um, you know, right within their account is probably the easiest thing to do. Now that said, you know, if you want to register a bunch of devices into a, a bunch of accounts, um, again, we've got a way to do that. And again, it starts from the uh, ALMS page uh, for you as a reseller. Um, we're going to start here from our ALMS reseller account, and we're just going to go to the register tab. And what you'll see, and again, it's a property of your ALMS reseller account, is we've got this link that says import for multiple partners. And so if you just start there and click on that, you're going to get this new pop-up that's, you know, tells you, gives you a little bit of instructions here, you know, select a CSV file for the bulk import. And so what you're going to do, um, if it's the first time you've done it, you know, you're going to, you can download this template and I've already done that. So and pre-populated it to make this process a little bit easier. But what we'll do here is uh, I'll just bring this over and, you know, I've done this in Excel. And so if you download this template, it basically gives you these columns um, and, and maybe one row of information. I've gone and populated my list of IMEIs and serial numbers. Um, and then I've generated kind of a random unique password for the ACE Manager password, as well as the MQTT and M3DA passwords. These are completely optional fields. You don't necessarily have to populate them, but we do recommend that you, you know, work with your customers to uh, make sure that they are updating passwords appropriately. I've given the device a friendly name, uh, as well as uh, labels, because uh, you, you can choose to add labels if you so desire as part of this import. And then where this might differ from the standard bulk registration template that you might be familiar with is there's a target company. And so you need to provide the UID of uh, your device, of your of the company, of the customer that you want to put these devices into. 
in my case, um, you know, I went back and I, I looked at my customer accounts and I went and got those uh, UIDs off of the, the main page in their account. And again, in the previous um, recording that we did, we explained how you can get that UIDs and, and why they're very important. And this is a perfect example of it. So I already have my template. We can see it's called one bulk register demo, multiple accounts. I'm just going to pull this back out of the way. And so um, I can go and select a CSV file. And so I'm going to grab that one. And so we'll see that it already knows that this these are a batch of LX40s. And so I'm going to be installing or registering four devices into a couple of different accounts. Uh, three different accounts, I believe. Um, they're all LX40s. You do have to do this all for the same types of devices. And so, you know, it's already validated my CSV file, so it thinks it's nicely formatted. You can send yourself an email to let you know when it's completed. Um, specify reference firmware is really only for MSCI, so we don't generally need to, to worry about that. And you do have the opportunity to pre-configure the system. So if you do want to take advantage of these workflows that we've built, you can do that. Um, you know, generally speaking, you're probably going to be able to set the configure communication information across devices and across accounts, maybe. Um, you'll notice that for the alias passwords, it's going to look to that CSV file to get those passwords. And, and again, that was where in here I've provided unique passwords for each device. And so the, the process will pull those. Um, it's going to upgrade to the latest firmware if you did this. And you know if you did have a template that you wanted to apply, let's say you were just doing this all into one account and there was one consistent template, you can pick the template. The template will come from your account and it will be then transferred to the to the customer account as required. And again, all of our workflows can be used for this, and there are some different features that um, you know might have to take place. Um, you know, AAF app. Similarly, if you wanted to to have the AAF app in your account initially, and then deploy it out to your customer accounts, this process will do that as long as the applications exist in your account to begin with. I'm going to cancel out of that um, because for this particular demo, I, I'm not going to do any of these pre-configure system information. I'm just going to leave everything um, at standard. And we're just going to have a look at how this works uh, against those um, particular accounts. So again, if we go back and, and look at our spreadsheet, um, move this out a little bit. I've used labels to indicate which accounts they're going to go into just to make this demo go a little bit more smoothly. So I'm going to put two, the first two devices into, you know, and I've called them service vehicle one and service vehicle two into my fleet account, into the ambulance account. I'm going to register this device and, and tag it with the friendly name ambulance 66. And into my police account, I'm going to call this one the SWAT truck. So after we finish this registration, it should be easy for us to go look at those and, and find them. So I'm going to say import, and it's going to come tell you all the things that it's going to do. So in this case, I'm going to create two systems in the account Warren's fleet, one system in each of ambulance and police, and then I'm going to activate those four devices again in those different accounts. If you had picked a, a template to be pushed out as a, an example, it might actually tell you that we were going to um, move a template and it would give you the template name into one or more of these different accounts as well. So we'll say, yep, I want all those things to happen. Continue. The system's going to go and take care of uh, all of these actions in the background. And it's now going to come back and tell us that we have imported two systems into Warren's fleet and one each into uh, my ambulance and police department companies. And so that's all done. And so as you would expect in your own account, there's still no devices, right? Because we didn't register those devices into our own account. We've registered them into the partner's account or into the customer's account. Um, and if we were to go look at operations, none of those operations that we just performed actually happened in this particular account. So let's go see the result of our process. And we're going to change company. And let's go look at 
the fleet account first. So we were going to register two devices into that account. And so we can now see that we've got two systems. And if we go look at monitor systems, we'll see that we have those two devices, service one and service two, exactly as we set them up in the, in the spreadsheet against the appropriate ser uh, serial numbers. We can see that our support and warranty dates for Airlink Complete have been set. And if we were to go look at this operation again, uh, we can see that, you know, the tokens have been added to this customer's account. Eligibility was confirmed. And again, we can see that it was my partner user, not my customer user, that triggered this operation into the customer's account. So everything happened exactly as we had hoped it would. Let's change company and go look at our police vehicle just to make sure it worked as well. And let's go look at that set of systems. And again, we can now see we've got our SWAT truck, as we called it, support and warranty dates. And if we were to go into the system details, again, we can see all of that AirLink complete information has been properly updated. And just for completeness, let's go back and look at our ambulance as well and make sure Ambulance 66 got registered properly. Go back into monitor systems. And again, we can see Ambulance 66, serial number, support date, even my labels have been applied properly. And of course, it's not active because I haven't actually don't have this actual device online. Um, but, you know, if it were online, it would call in, it would, you know, register with the system and it would start communicating as we would expect it to. So we'll go back to our reseller account. And there you go, quickly and easily. I think we've shown you how you can very effectively and very quickly register devices into your customers' accounts helping them with the AirLink complete registration process and making sure that all of their devices are being securely managed through ALMS. So hopefully that, uh, that helps and um, you're getting a lot of value out of these little sessions that we're recording. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us through your partner manager and we will continue to try and add content like this to the learning management system so that you have access to all of this information. Thank you for joining us today and we'll catch up with you soon.